Beep. A lot of people see producers that use mainly loops as skillless producers that shouldn't be making music to begin with. But I disagree. I really do believe that in order to make gold out of poop, a bunch of it, it takes skill. Now, one of the biggest mistakes people make with drum loops is not being aware that each drum loop can have its own swing. Each drum loop is its own identity. And as you start to stack these drum loops up because you saw your favorite producers doing it, you start to be like a gambling addict in Las Vegas hoping for a Hail Mary. Now, in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can hit the jackpot because I'm I'm gonna put these damn loops together. But what does swing mean? We all know this very basic boots and cats beat. Now, when most people program in a closed hi-hat, this is where the swing will take its shape. This is what we would call 116 swing because we are in a 116 grid. A lot of the times we're gonna add swing like so just not have it land on the beat. We're gonna have it land a little in front or behind. Because if it lands on the beat, then we would consider that being robotic versus having swag. Problem is, is that you can do this at different intensities. For example, you could say, you know, you wanna drag. So then you would do this. And you can see how that sounds good, right? But pair that up with maybe Another loop doing a close hi-hat like this or a perk like that, not following this swing that this drum loop has set, the identity. Then you get a bunch of different identities and it becomes somewhat like a bipolar disorder, you know? You have different swings going off, but that is what swing is. You can also have swing, you know, on the claps. For instance, a lot of people say, you know, don't land the clap with the kick like so. You can have it drag a little or you can have it come in before the kick like so. So imagine now. See, that sounds fine, but now imagine a bunch of other drum loops landing on the beat or landing a little different than that, then you're gonna get a mess. So let's fix this like a pro. The first thing you need to do is you need to make one of these be the leader, the main drum loop. And for this one, I'm gonna decide to go with my perk loop here because I like the swing that it provides. What I'm gonna do is hold control click and we're gonna extract, suck the groove out. So good that it's gonna give us one of the best grooves of all time. And um, there we have the groove. Now we're gonna start with dinners ready. What I wanna do is I wanna go here and we're gonna have the perk be dragged in. We'll use this one. Obviously I practiced before the video. Now you have a couple of options here. One, you can quantize through your groove pool. So you can quantize whatever this is gonna be on before we hit it with, again, this swing. Uh, it's up to you to decide how you want to do it. Personally, me, I go here, click, and I hold Command U, Control U, and you can see that we have gotten rid of swing. We've quantized this. Just to see again what happened, we're going to be shifting things like this that are not on beat to be in beat. Now, while doing this again, you're killing identity and character because now you've pretty much made the loop sound more robotic. But here's the thing. We need to reset the swag on these loops. We need to reset the swing so that we can apply the new swing, the new swag, the new Jordans. You know, we got to take them vans off to put Air Jordans on. Does that make sense? Now, if you want to see what it's doing, you just click here and you're going to see that we're shifting and we're moving. There's an extra step that we have to do. And sometimes you're going to have to do this when you have drums that are just too washed out or too much release now what does that mean washed out means this hit here for example you can see that it has this very long tail so when i utilize this gate here by switching there and lowering this i can pretty much transient gate we'll say this so what's happening is we're adding like this fade to this guy to every transient on this loop and eventually you'll reach something like this so you can see that you're lowering the release of the drums if you have drums that are very washy etc sometimes again that might lead to messiness so we're gonna use that when needed so on this one i think i'm gonna leave it as is now let's bring in the next one very messy okay so what we're gonna do again command u we're quantizing now again Exceptions will always apply. You might quantize something and it might sound bad. It's up to you to figure out why. Maybe you have to do something different. But again, we're going to do that here. Now what I'm going to do is again, add this guy. OK, 
Okay, sounding better. So you can see that it's starting to line up. Now there's little things in this loop that I don't like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gate this. Magic. Ooh. Now we're really gonna add a very characterful drum loop to this. It's called syncopation. Even syncopation is misspelled. So let's see. Now, obviously, this one doesn't work too well because the claps are dragging like crazy. So, again, it goes like in its own right, it would sound fine with a kick. But, like, again, we're bringing this in different identities. We don't want to create a damn psychological disorder. So, we have to put in the homework. Okay. And this is what I mean. There's skill in this, obviously. So, we're going to go here, here, quantize this guy. And obviously there's just too much like stuff going on. So I'm going to try and gate. And you're going to run into a situation probably like this where now you're like, okay, you know, I did all the homework, but it still doesn't work. So now this is where you have to, you know, be like, a, you know, like a dude that just takes notes what he wants and takes, right? So you, you say, oh, okay, this, maybe I want the little you know, little glitches or something, right? So then we can apply volume automations through the clip and grab what we need. So maybe we can grab this and pull down. Also, maybe we want this. I'm gonna copy and paste that. See how that sounds like. I don't want it before and after that one because that one was way too messy, but I think you remember how messy that was. Now, I haven't accounted for adding this damn hip-hop loop. So again, let's put it and see what it, if it adds anything. And I'm, I'm a huge believer that you should be mixing and mashing drum loops just to come up with more unique ones. Grab what you can, but let's see how this sounds. Quantize this, which changes something. But the main winner here, obviously, is going to be in the gate that we're about to do. On this one, obviously, the proper thing would be to remove the low end so that if we have, let's say, a four on the four kick, then it doesn't interfere. And now we're going to add the swing that we are desperately missing from here. All right, well, let's add a kick and see how it sounds. And then for this, I would also command you it and apply the same groove. Oh yeah, and I also forgot to add it to the bass. That's also very valid. You can also do it on the bass because bass will usually have a lot of swing, you know, especially someone that knows what they're doing. So we can do it to the bass. You just gotta be careful not to change it too much. Now, this works in any genre, maybe hip hop, maybe trance, ambient, hyper pop, Brazzers, porno step. It doesn't matter what genre it is. Every drum is going to have its own identity in terms of swing. And it's up to you as a producer to acknowledge that and remove that identity so that you can insert your own identity into it and get something that sounds cohesive. A lot of these mistakes will usually make your track sound slower than the BPM they are. They will make your track sound cluttered. They will make your track sound messy. So these are things that you need to be aware of. My name is Sam World, and I want to help as many people as I can make the music that they want. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can head over to evilsounds.com. You can find all of my sound design work. Not to brag, I don't pay for testimonials, but I have a lot of big artists using my work without me asking them. Like Hardwell, Space92, Mal P, James Hype. West End, David Guetta, lots of variety. I try my best, and again, that's all I can do. Now, if you want to further your knowledge, you can check out this video here that I made on how to achieve a fat bass. I break it down very simply for you guys. And, and to be honest, getting a fat bass is easy. It's just people seem to overcomplicate things with poorly designed patches. I break it down in the video on what you really need to have a fat bass. And it might not be what you think. So make sure to check it out, and you guys have a great rest of your day.